Confidence is key. You've probably heard that saying all before, and confidence can affect just how much you enjoy your ride. Scary trails and difficult terrain, uh, if you've had a bit of a crash or you're not too confident, can really knock down the level of your riding. So today in this video, I've got some great ways of how to overcome your fears and improve your confidence when riding scary trails like this. A lack of confidence then might not come from something that looks steep or scary or intimidating. It might just be from the fact that maybe you're not very good at it, unfortunately. Well, if that's the case, then the best way to tackle this is obviously positively, but also perseverance. The more you cycle, the more you mountain bike, the better you're going to get at it. And especially if you focus on the area that you feel that you're not doing too good at. A great thing to do is maybe get a, tra a trainer or get, go for some coaching, go for some lessons. Lessons can make a world of difference because something you're not doing quite right can then be easily pointed out from a third party. Another good confidence inspirer is riding with your friends, especially if they're a bit better than you. A good friendship group and a good sort of group of peers around you are gonna help boost up your morale and your confidence and, and really encourage you to push your riding to the next level. And you can actually learn from them as well. So if someone can do a gap jump that you can't, whoa, ne nearly man down there. If they can do a gap jump that you can't, actually watching them do it and getting the tips from them how to do it, maybe the speed, the technique, things like that. And that can work for technical and steep and scary terrain, not just jumps and getting airborne then that's a really great way of going about it too. It's really tricky for me to cover anything and everything when it comes to a rider's confidence. We're all different, so we all have our different ways of how we think about things, like this drop. So I'm gonna go over a few of the key intricacies and a few things that can really affect your riding confidence. Let's kick things off with drop-offs then, because they can be pretty intimidating, especially or when there's an actual gap, a proper drop to clear. What kinds of thing put you off here? What's the scary part? Is it the distance you have to go? The actual drop or the fact that, there, well, there's just, whoop, see ya, space in between. What freaks people out most then about drops, I think, is not actually maybe the gap or the drop itself or even the speed that you have to go off of it. It's the consequences of what could happen if it goes wrong because, well, come with me this way a moment. You can't come up short here. If you're coming off and your front wheel drops, well, it's going very wrong. So it's actually the fact that you, the fear of almost hurting yourself. So how will I, in my head, process a drop to be able to get over it nice and safely? Here's how to build up that confidence for drop-offs then. Well, first, I would start smaller, really get the technique and the feel for being airborne dialed in nice and proper. You can get drops at trail centers and bike parks and things like that where there is no middle to them. So a drop similar to this might actually have a slope here whereby it's filled in. So if you drop off of it, you clip your back wheel, it's not the end of the world. You can even roll it to get a feel for it first. Start nice and small and work your way up. Then when it comes to doing something like this, where the consequences are slightly higher, because what have we got? Six, seven foot gap with maybe a, a four foot drop by the time you're down on the landing. You're gonna be sort of ready and prepped and mentally you're gonna know what you need to do. Practice it over and over again until you get to this point. When it gets to the big stuff, Imagine the middle's filled in. Don't try to think of this gap in the middle. Imagine it's not even there. It doesn't exist. That wood just carries on. And you're just gonna come in, good positive mental attitude, imagining yourself just sailing off the end, front end up, all the way down. And you can do it, definitely. Jumps are next up on our hit list then of intimidating sort of features that can really knock your confidence because, well, it's getting airborne. And getting airborne is something people that are generally pretty scared of. And the technique of jumping is something that's a little bit more intricate. So it's, it's something that can have a bit more of a bigger consequence. However, when it comes to doing them, we can transfer a few of the techniques to overcoming them from drop-offs to jumps. Things like starting smaller, using a little jump to get the technique absolutely bang on is a great way of just really honing in that skill. Also things like this, this is a tabletop where the gap of the jump is filled in, there's nothing in the middle. So if I was to jump out of this and just plop into the middle, it's not the end of the world, I'm not gonna get hurt. And I can actually build up my speed each time to get further and further and further in a safe manner. So you can really build up your self-confidence that way. And then when it comes to it, you can start taking it to a slightly, maybe a smaller jump with a gap in the middle, 
which once you clear a small jump, you'll be like, yes, I've done it, I've nailed it, I've cleared a gap jump. And you slowly build up from that. So really building on your confidence each step by step. Let's start off with this tabletop then, and maybe just have a go at it, see how far I get, and then build up until I clear it. And then I think it is time we move over to the gap. Fine. Okay, let's give it another go and see if we can get a little bit further. Ah, so close. Right, third time's a charm, and then I think I'm, I'm feeling good. I think I can take it over to a gap. Third time, come on. Nice. Yes, absolutely stoked. Nailed it. Finally, a little bit more speed because I built my confidence up. I cleared it, so I think I'm feeling pretty good. So I think we're going to go, I saw a jump with a gap in it over there and I'm feeling good. I think we're going to tackle that one. This is where it can get pretty scary and intimidating then, an actual physical gap jump. And if you've had a bad experience with one of these in the past, will definitely knock your confidence. But don't worry, we're going to overcome that today. So obviously we've got about a, a two bike length gap here and there's a nothing in the middle. So if you come up short, like we were doing on the tabletop, just plopping into the middle to build up confidence, you cannot do that here, which is why uh, on the other jumps is such a great way to build up the technique and the speed and knowing what to do. But on this, do you know what? I'm going to use that positive visualization again. I'm going to imagine myself and the process I need to do when jumping. Do you know what? I'm going to imagine actually it's just full. I'm going to come into this, I'm going to look at it and be like, there's no gap there. I'm going to use that in my brain to then really just go for it and bite the bullet. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, stoked, cleared it. I came into that on the first attempt. I was a little bit slow. I just sort of crept over it. So I sort of took that information on board. I was still really pleased. So I took the positives away and uh, sort of knew that I cleared it, but I needed to clean it up. So I came in with a bit more pace, a bit more pop off the lip, a bit more, a bit more of a launch and sailed over it. Well happy with that. But anyway, do you know what? That is it for this video. I hope these sort of tips and pointers have really helped improve your confidence uh, when it comes to clearing your next obstacle. Maybe in life, maybe out on the trails, who knows? But for me, for now, I'm out of here. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. I'll see you later.